this was posted on Reddit today. This is basically the patent for the belly cooling. They call it the aerodynamic heat exchanger for a vehicle. You can see the inventors, the applicant is Aptera Motors. And this was just today, May 7th. So I wanna go through some things I noticed that were interesting. I'll link to the description, the full PDF, and link to this on the patent website. So you can take a look. So just a few things, this first part, is to provide the aerodynamic heat exchanger that is, you can easily service it. So this says, provides for readily removing or replacing an area of the heat exchanger that experienced localized damage, thereby leaving the other unaffected chambers in place. So it's kind of designed to be, if maybe you just damage. The majority of this is going to be underneath the vehicle. So maybe you damage this part. You can just replace the center versus this whole thing. So these are actually two separate units. I'll get into that later. And they also said that they're going to use water glycol mix, reducing the amount of pressurized refrigerant needed throughout the vehicle. Let's see, figure five. So this is just some different views. So primarily this is going to be happening underneath the vehicle. So it's outside the heat of the sun. So this part, figure six, includes a bottom interior, interior view of the inner chamber portion of the aerodynamic seat exchanger according to the embodiment. So this is just kind of showing the flow rate of the liquid goes through here, probably similar thing here. So it says one or more aerodynamic heat exchangers may be used. So this is basically, I would say three different paths that it can take. It also says in figure one, we'll go back up to that. Figure one, which are described as the contact says one or more body panels under the underside undercarriage of the vehicle. Then we also compromise more body panels, such as the exterior, including hood panel, roof panel, truck, side panel, mid panel, back panel, door panel, front wheel cover, or rail skirt. However, the preferred method is basically underneath the car to avoid direct exposure to the sun. And it says, and I've been curious about this too, for the cooling, basically the AC in the vehicle, it's been about estimated one to three kilowatts, which is not that bad. And it says the capacity of the aerodynamic heat ex exchanger can shed 20 kilowatts of heat has been estimated. And this has been brought up in the past, but they can also use the AC to help cool if needed. The belly cooling, I kind of call it that just because I like that the that name more than aerodynamic heat exchanger, but it's more effective when it gets to sufficient speed, about 10 to 15 miles an hour. So sitting still, it's not as effective because it uses the air somewhat to kind of shed heat away. So it's just saying that it may compromise the inner portion and exterior portion. So this is kind of how these two can connect to each other. So figure nine shows an exploded view of the third chamber. So this is the inner chamber, 634, it's just here. And how it's coupled to 633 down here. So it's just, these are, this is the center part, which is underneath the car directly. Okay, it's just a kind of a cross view so this is how it can interface with each other it says 
that provide mating services for the outer chamber and inner chamber. So this is how they connect to each other. So 633 is this part down here. So you can see how this would connect to this main part, 637. In figure 10, so this talking about the aerodynamic struts. So they've, this is, might be like the final design of the strut covers to make it more aerodynamic. So the wind is not as turbulent in that area. It says the demand systems for this system compromises motors, electric motors, inverters, batteries, the cabin, and any other components that require heating, ventilation, or air conditioning. So it says the heating energy may originate in the plant within the heating element, which was going to be what the launch vehicles would be like, and then later with the heat pump, once they have that. So this compromises of three aerodynamic heat exchangers. Two heat exchangers mechanically and thermically coupled to the battery and cabin. And one aerodynamic heat exchanger mechanically and thermically coupled, coupled to the motors and inverters. So you have one motors and inverters and then battery and cabin. So let me know what else you found in here that was interesting. This kind of shows the Electrical diagram at a basic level, high level of everything that's going on. So I have heating elements for, again, the launch vehicles. This doesn't show the heat pump in this example. Uh, demand systems, motors, inverters, battery cabin. Let's go to the top and scroll through these real quick. So all the images. As you read through this, this will kind of explain what all these numbers are referring to. So it's a very good portion of the vehicle for a while. I thought it was just going to be this center strip essentially, but it's nice to see that it's taking up the whole, almost the whole length of the vehicle really, which is a lot of area to shed heat versus a small radiator in the front, which they might have on the launch of vehicles. And this would come later, I would hope not too long after, because I would honestly prefer an Aptera with the belly cooling versus the standard internal radiator. So let me know what else you find was interesting in this document. You kind of see like the air disturbances from the wheels or from the tires and then the, between the body and the wheel pants those are the biggest air disturbances on the vehicle looks like here too so let me know this is just kind of showing how aerodynamics are in a normal car this isn't relevant to Aptera these images here it's just kind of showing as a comparison, essentially. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to when they have like an official reveal of this, which is ready to show, because that's a very fascinating patent and something they should be very proud of. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. See you.